The Great Lakes Navigation System and its connectivity is vitally important to the nation's economy. The movement of goods on the Great Lakes are reliant on the maintenance of harbors and connecting channels between the lakes. Here, at the head of the St. Mary's River, is the only water connection between Lake Superior and the Lower Great Lakes. The river drops 21 feet over a short three-quarter mile stretch, creating swift moving water known as the St. Mary's Rapids. These rapids made it impossible for early trading vessels to pass through the river. Vessels had to be unloaded and their contents portaged around the rapids on land. The first steamship portaged onto Lake Superior was the SS Independence in 1845. To open up commerce between Lake Superior and the Lower Great Lakes, the state of Michigan constructed the first U.S. lock, the State Lock, in 1855. This allowed merchandise and raw material to transit on vessels through the St. Mary's River. The state of Michigan operated and maintained the locks, but as shipping traffic grew and vessel sizes increased, it became apparent that a second, larger lock was needed. Lacking resources to undertake the construction of a new lock, the state sought support from the federal government. In 1881, the federal government took responsibility and improved reliability by building the Weitzel Lock, which opened in 1883. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Detroit District, has operated and maintained the locks ever since. During the late 19th century, iron ore came onto the scene. Industrial growth in America called for raw material necessary for steel production. The Sioux Locks are the critical connection between iron ore in the Mesabi and Marquette iron ranges and steel mills in the American Midwest. From 1880 through the Roaring Twenties, steel production increased sharply in the United States, as did iron ore passing through the locks. To handle demand, three additional locks were constructed. The original Poe in 1896, the Davis in 1914, and the Sabin in 1919. Four operational locks allowed for the continuous flow of materials and growth of the shipping industry on the Great Lakes. America saw the need to reinvest in the Sioux locks at the onset of World War II. Congress directed a new lock to handle increased demand for iron ore used to build tanks, trucks, and planes. The MacArthur lock construction was completed in 1943 with military defenses staged nearby to protect the locks from enemy activity. American production of iron ore peaked in 1953. Since that time, higher grade iron ore deposits in America were depleted. American innovators sought to develop our abundant magnetite formations and started producing specialized pellets called taconite. Taconite is a carefully designed iron ore product that enables greater control in the steelmaking process. The first shipment of taconite pellets came down the lakes in 1956. Also in this time, the Great Lakes system moved toward more efficient shipping dimensions. Deeper channels and wider locks would accommodate larger vessels with five times the capacity of earlier ships. Construction of today's Poe lock was completed in 1968. Built 110 feet wide, 32 feet deep, and 1,200 feet long, the Poe lock enabled a new class of vessels on the Great Lakes. Today, 75 to 80 million tons of goods transit the Sioux locks each year, primarily through the Poe, which handles 86% of commodities. Taconite accounts for more than half of all commodities moving through the locks. This fuels the primary production of steel in America and is essential to manufacturing industries like automotive and appliance. The Sioux locks remain the critical connection between raw materials and manufacturing for the nation. Currently, 100% of American iron ore en route to steel mills on the lower Great Lakes transits the Sioux locks. The locks are vital to manufacturing and our economy. Maritime transportation on the Great Lakes saves America $3.6 billion in transportation costs annually. And the Detroit District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is proud to operate and maintain the Sioux locks in service to our nation.